I'm Sifu Devin Fan. Welcome to Eight Immortals Wing Chun. So what I'm hoping through this series of videos is because we're all kind of trapped in the same environment right now, everyone's stuck at home, uh, it's very difficult to kind of find new ways to stay physically active and to learn new things. It's easy to get stuck in kind of a, a sedentary, sedentary routine. So what I'm hoping through this series of videos is that working together, you can learn the basics uh, of Wing Chun Kung Fu, which is the style of Kung Fu Kung Fu that I practice, I'm a Wing Chun practitioner. Um, and then in doing so, you can learn some self-defense skills as well as finding kind of new ways of moving your body, uh, using your muscles, uh, using energy, and, and also gaining practical skills. So that's the concept. Um, so why study Kung Fu in the first place? So for me, uh, I've been studying Kung Fu for uh, 30 years now, I'm almost 50. Um, I started out with a uh, hangar and Fu Jian Wai Crane. Uh, and then later on, I moved to uh, Wing Chun under Sifu Trenton Haggard. I've been studying uh, uh, Wing Chun. Uh, he's retired now, but I've been studying Wing Chun exclusively uh, for about 15 years. Um, so the reason to study Kung Fu, you know, for me, it has had a, a profound effect on my life. So. Not just on, uh, not just a physical uh, sense of, of fighting skills, but also, uh, more importantly, kind of inner transformation. So, I know if you take kung fu into your heart, you make it a part of yourself. That takes a long time, takes hours of practice, and it takes a a mental leap where you actually are, commit yourself to something. Um, if you can make kung fu a part of yourself, it has an unbelievable capacity for changing, not just your own internal energy, but also how you interact with the world, how you interact with other people, um, and I think most importantly, how, how you view yourself uh, and, your, and your, your sense of self-worth and self-esteem. All those different things has a very powerful tool that way. So that's some of the things I think are most valuable about it. Um, and really it's true that Kung Fu is a, it's a way of being. It's not, not, not necessarily just a way of doing things. There are many different applications, but. Kung Fu itself, if you take on the spirit, is a way of, a way of being in the world. Um, in that sense, I think it's like a true alchemy. Actually, it has a true power for transformation. The other thing that I think is really, really important about it is, I'll tell you what I was always striving for with Kung Fu. A song called Wu Wei, so this Tao's concept, but basically the idea means unconscious action. Okay, so I hope, I hope you've never been in a situation where you had to defend your life in a physical physical fight. So um, I have done so. Uh, also done uh, full contact fighting, which is, has some certain similarities. One thing that you learn very quickly, okay, is that in a real life scenario, or in a situation where a skilled fighter is trying to knock you out, it's very chaotic, okay? It's not like in the movies where it's one moves choreographed into another. You can plan things, you can say, oh, I'm gonna, someone throws a punch, I'm gonna execute this technique and strike. It doesn't work that way. Okay, chaos, different environment, punches coming from, kicks coming from all directions, all right? So the concept with the training in Wing Chun specifically is to create that unconscious response. So what that means is when you make, when these, these movements, these techniques are no longer separate, they become a part of kind of who you are, then when those things happen, when that punch comes and you can react, you react naturally. It's part of your nature to react. Just like it's the nature of a snake to strike. So you don't have to plan those things. I'll tell you, if someone throws a punch at you in real life and punch is coming, if you have to stop to plan what you're gonna do next, you've already been hit, okay? There's no time to do that. So that's the, the foundation of the training is to, is to create that, to make those skills, not just skills, but actually part of your own character, all right? That's the basic concept. So how do you get there? We have many different training techs. We have wooden dummy. We have different forms that we do in Wing Chun. Um, but I think, you know, for you, if I'm sitting at home and wondering this, I'm saying, hmm, is, is Wing Chun for me? Is studying Kung Fu, Fu for me? I know a lot of times in the past when I've approached people, uh, trying to talk to them about Kung Fu or, or uh, tell them what it's about, they always say, oh, no, 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 that's not for me. Say for a lot of different reasons. Actually, you know, the most important thing, Kung Fu 
has to do with your character more than anything else. You know, if I'm looking to, for a student deciding whether or not I will teach someone, it's not about their physical ability or, you know, how fast they can run or whether they're flexible, all those different things. Trust me, I have all kinds of physical arthritis, everything else myself. It's not, not the issue, okay? Your character, the reason you're doing something, your approach you bring to life, that's what really what's important, okay? So we have something called the Three Treasures in Taoism that is directly connected to Wing Chun and what we're talking about. It's uh, humility, compassion, moderation. Those are the things that, that drive my philosophy of Kung Fu, kind of what I'm looking for. So that's humility, compassion, moderation, much more important than, you know, at first, whether you can punch hard, all those different things. Those are skills you can acquire. The other thing is, you know, a lot of things comes down to breaking your own barriers. So, and automatically when I say to someone, when I say to you, I'm here and together we're going to learn Kung Fu, immediately barriers come up. So I can't do this because uh, maybe I'm inactive or, you know, I don't exercise regularly or I'm overweight or I have mobility issues. All those are kind of barriers, not to you learning Kung Fu. Okay, there are barriers for you to begin learning, for, for you to begin that process and to take a risk. So that's what I'm hoping that you'll do. And it's going to be, you know, that's a challenge. So challenge for yourself. No better time to do it. Okay, then you're stuck right now. You're stuck inside. But imagine now if who knows how long we're going to be in this scenario when two months from now you emerge, you're able to come out of the world but you're emerging as a different person with a whole new set of skills, a whole new different way of moving, a whole new understanding of things. So you walk out the door all of a sudden, then now you know Kung Fu. So that's what happens if you apply yourself and if you take that risk and take on a new skill. If not, then it's very easy to go one day and next just scrolling through your phone, not doing anything, okay? So that's gonna be my challenge to you, um, is to take that risk. So. What is Wing Chun? Uh, so Southern Kung Fu style. Uh, fundamentally, it's aimed at a kind of close fighting techniques. That's its, its real strength is is a, is a close game, not so much a not so much distance techniques. Uh, comes out of revolutionary China. Uh, all kinds of legends and myths surrounding kind of where it come, came from. Uh, certainly, it's hundreds of years old. Uh, has its roots in the uh, the Southern Shaolin Temple and that tradition. Actually, in, in Southern China, it's actually called Orthodox Shaolin. It's not called Wing Chun. Um, you may have heard the legend of Ying Mui, who's a woman, the abbotess from the Southern Shaolin Temple when it was burned down. Then she fled the temple. Uh, long story short, she, uh, the legend is that she ended up teaching this Kung Fu system to a, a girl named Ying, Ying Wing Chun, uh, who was supposed to marry a warlord she didn't want to marry. And she, if she could beat this warlord, uh, then she could marry her true love. That's kind of the story. So. Um, very fanciful. Whether it's true or not doesn't really matter. Uh, the concept behind that is that this style is developed for a smaller person to fight a larger person. That that's very much true. Um, the other thing that is is evident for me, okay, especially having studied Fujian White Crane, is that, um, and also some Shutsuan, a snake style, that Wing Chun itself is kind of a fusion between the two systems of White Crane and Snake Kung Fu. And really, I, I think it has the, the most foundational, the most important principles of both things combined in the most effective way. So, you know, Wing Chun has like, uh, not very many forms, actually only six forms. So the three empty hand forms, the Mu Kian Zhang, the wooden dummy, uh, the Ba Chan Do, eight slash, slashing knives, and the six and a half point pole. Those are the two weapons forms. So from Kung Fu perspective, it's not many. Many have like hundreds of forms, thousands of different moves. Actually, Wing Chun is much, uh, the basic techniques and the forms, much easier to learn than most styles. So, the interesting thing though, even though the techniques themselves are fairly simple and straightforward, the principles, the foundations where they come from are enormously rich and deep. So, just imagine that. So, for 15 years now, I've been studying this one style, just practicing, practicing, practicing. Anyone who knows me, it's all I'm doing is practicing. I go to sleep thinking about Kung Fu, I wake up thinking about Kung Fu, any spare moment I have in practicing Kung Fu. So how can I do that for 15 years, one style? You think you're gonna get bored or, learn, or stop learning things. Amazing thing is, even after all this time, all this practice, all this techniques, I'm still 
feel like I'm just scratching the surface learning something new every day. So I would love to be able to impart that, just kind of open up that, that cavern of, it's like a magical cavern of, of concepts and ideas. There's no end to it. It's like the Tao. The more you take from it, the more there, it, there is to give from it. So that's the, what I'm hoping could be the beginning of this, this experience for you if you're willing to take that risk. Not take a risk on me, take a risk on yourself. So when you think about that risk, what's the worst that can happen? You look silly when you're first practicing something. Your kids make fun of you. Any different little things, okay? That's life, that's part of learning anything new. Always gonna be awkward in the beginning. But if you let it take root, then it can grow. It can grow into something really, honestly for me, has been transformational. So I'd love to share that with other people, all right? So that's my challenge to you. Um, and ask yourself, if you take that risk, you take that challenge, you put in that energy, then what could happen? There's only one way to find out. So let's begin.